Have you ever tuned in to a video or a TV show and the sound was like this? This is where they start. Where the actors are completely inaudible or something like this. Where the music is way too loud. Well, this problem, also called the cocktail party problem, may never happen again. Mitsubishi and Indiana University just published a new model as well as a new dataset tackling this task of identifying the right soundtrack. For example, if we take the same audio clip we just ran with the music way too loud, you can simply turn up or down the audio track you want to give more importance to the speech than the music. Water and straight in to the hot pans. The problem here is isolating any independent sound source from a complex acoustic scene like a movie scene or a YouTube video where some sounds are not well balanced. Sometimes you simply cannot hear some actors because of the music playing or explosions or other ambient sounds in the background. Well, if you successfully isolate the different categories in a soundtrack, it means that you can also turn up or down only one of them, like turning down the music a bit to hear all the other actors correctly as we just did. From someone that isn't a native English speaker, this will be incredibly useful when listening to videos with a loud background music and actors or speakers with a strong accent I am not used to. Just imagine having these the three sliders in a YouTube Everyone's video to manually tweak mouth. them. How cool would that be? A metal arm? It could also be incredibly useful for translations or speech-to-speech -speech applications where we could just isolate the speaker to improve the task's results. Here, the researchers focused on the task of splitting a soundtrack into three categories – music, speech, and sound effects. Three categories that are often seen in movies or TV shows. They called this task the cocktail fork problem, and you can clearly see where they got the name from. And I'll spoil you the results, they are quite amazing, as we will hear in the next few seconds. But first, let's take a look at how they receive a movie soundtrack and transform it into three independent soundtracks. This is the architecture of the model. You can see the input mixture Y, which is the complete soundtrack at the top. And at the bottom, all of our three output sources, X, which I repeat, are the speech, music and other sound effects separated. The first step is to encode the soundtrack using a Fourier transform on different resolutions called STFT or Short Time Fourier Transform. This means that the input, which is a soundtrack having frequencies over time, is first split into shorter segments. For example, here it is either split with 32, 64 or 256 milliseconds windows. Then we compute the Fourier transform on each of these shorter segments, sending 8 milliseconds at a time for each window or segment. This will give the Fourier spectrum of each segment analyzed on different segment sizes for the same soundtrack, allowing us to have have short-term and long-term information on the soundtrack by emphasizing specific frequencies from the initial input if they appear more often in a longer segment, for example. This information, initially represented in time frequency, is now replaced by the Fourier phase and magnitude components, or Fourier spectrum, which can be shown in a spectrogram similar to this one. Note that here we have only an overlapping segment of 0.10 seconds, but it is the same thing in our case, with three different different segment sizes also overlapping. Then, this transformed representation simply containing more information about the soundtrack is sent into a fully connected block to be transformed into the same dimension for all branches. This transformation is the first module which is learned during training of the algorithm. We then average the results as it is shown to improve the model's capacity to consider these multiple sources as a whole rather than independently. Here the multiple sources are the transformed soundtrack using differently sized windows. Don't give up yet, we just have a few steps left before hearing the final results. This average information is then sent into a bidirectional long short term memory, which is a type of recurrent neural network allowing the model to understand the inputs over time, just like a convolutional neural network understands images over space. If you are not familiar with recurrent neural networks, I invite you to watch the video I made introducing them. This is the second module that is trained during training. We average the results once again and finally send them to each of our three branches that will extract the appropriate sounds for the category. Here the decoder is simply fully connected layers again, as you can see on the right. 
they will be responsible for extracting only the wanted information from our encoded information. Of course, this is the third and last module that learns during training in order to achieve this. And all these three modules are trained simultaneously. Finally, we just reverse the first step taking the spectrum data back into time frequency components and voila! We have our final soundtrack divided into three categories. As I said earlier in the video, this research allows you to turn up or down the volume of each category independently. But an example is always better than words. So let's quickly hear that on two different clips. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Tape, the super strong waterproof tape. That can instantly patch bonds. As if it wasn't already cool enough, the separation also allows you to edit specific soundtrack independently to add sound filters or reverb. We're strong, and once it's on, it holds on tight. And for emergency auto repair, it keeps its grip even in the toughest conditions. They also released a dataset for this new task by merging three separate datasets, one for speech, one for music, and another for sound effects. This way, they created soundtracks from which they already had the real separated auto channels and could train their model to replicate this ideal separation. Of course, the merging or mixing steps wasn't as simple as it sounds. They had to make the final soundtrack as challenging as a real movie scene. This means that they had to make transformations to the independent audio tracks to have a good blend that sounds realistic in order to be able to train a model on this dataset and then use it in the real world. I invite you to read their paper for more technical detail about their implementation and this new dataset they introduced if you'd like to tackle this task as well. If you do so, please let me know and send me your progress. I'd love to see that, or rather to hear that. Both are linked in the description below. Thank you very much for watching for those of you who are still here and huge thanks to Anthony Manalo, the most recent YouTube member supporting the videos.